President. Please be seated. The court is now back in session. Again, the floor is given to the defense team for case and point to put further question to the witness. You may proceed, counsel. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning again, witness. I was introducing myself. I am Antagise International Counsel for Mr. Kyo Sampan, and in this capacity, I would like to put some follow-up questions to you. I would like to start by talking about your work at the dam work site, which you referred to in answer to questions put to you by the international co-prosecutor. And if I remember correctly, you worked there, you worked at three dam work sites during the democratic Kampuchea period, Kambo, Koktam Chek, and Trapyang Tamar. Did I properly understand your testimony? Good morning, Mr. Uh, President. And to respond to that question, yes, uh, that is correct. Je voudrais tout d'abord. Uh, I would like for a start that we discuss the Kambal Dam work site. You said uh, a fixed timeline was given to you for the building of that dam, and you said that initially it was set at four months, and subsequently, Taval had decided to reduce that timeline to three months. Is that what happened? Did I properly understand your testimony? Regarding the achievement of the work plan uh, was that the initial work plan was for a period of four months. And all the forces at the work site led by the leaders, namely the regimental leaders and our commanders, were called to a meeting and they were asked whether they could achieve uh, the uh, work uh, within the limited uh, time set, that is uh, for a period of four months. And uh, during the meeting, all the regimental commanders committed to finish the work within the limited uh, period of time, and that was to be done before the uh, Khmer New Year. So they were not forced uh, to commit to the time frame, but they themselves uh, committed uh, to the time frame. Mais puisque la date but, but since the timeline was three months, did I misunderstand when you said that Tabal insisted that the work be done in three months? set forth a plan for four month uh, work completion and the world thought that the time uh, frame overlapped the Khmer New Year period. For that reason, he checked with the uh, unit leaders whether they could achieve the work uh, completion before the Khmer New Year celebration. So they were not forced to complete the work earlier by Onka. Donc si je comprends bien. So if I properly understand Tabal's decision to reduce the timeline to three months, it was after consulting the unit chiefs and commanders. Is that correct?
in fact, uh, he asked uh, the workforces, and the workforces gave him back their feedback that they committed to complete the work there before the Khmer uh, New Year. Because if they were to complete the work within the four months period, it would uh, run into the Khmer New Year, or could be a little bit over the Khmer New Year. And for that, the Khmer New Year celebration may have to be postponed. Still in answer to questions put to you by the co-prosecutor, on Monday, the 30th of November, you explained that you understood that one of the reasons why the commanders said that the work could be done in three months was their determination to be promoted or to be maintained in their duties. I would like you to say whether you remember the names of any of the commanders who were promoted at the end of the work on the Cambodian Dam work site. No. On the issue of the promotion, actually there was no uh, arrangement for anyone to be uh, promoted. In fact, the unit leaders themselves committed uh, to achieve uh, the work completion uh, before the uh, schedule. And there was no formal promotion, for example, from a platoon commander to company or to the battalion or regiment. No, there was no formal promotion at all. Um, I would like us to talk about the Krokom Czech Dam worksite. If I properly understood your testimony before this chamber, you said that the construction of that dam started after the Kambo Dam was complete, completed. That was in 1976. Did I understand you correctly? For the construction of the Kokrumcha Dam, the work started after the commencement of the work at uh, the Kambao Dam. However, it was it started about a month after the commencement of the uh, first dam. It was not until the first dam was completed. You said that the work on the Cambodian Dam worksite started sometime in February. Did I properly understand your testimony as being what I have just referred to? I do not know whether February was the first or the uh, second uh, month of the year. However, when we started working at the Gumbau Dam, the water fully receded. Donc vous situez le début. So you would say that the beginning of works at Kokrom Czech would have been approximately one month after the, the beginning of the work on Cambo. And if I understood correctly, you, would say that you said that the work at Kokrom Czech ended sometime in August or September. Is that correct? The commencement of the Kokrom Czech Dam was after the work uh, started at the uh, Kambao Dam worksite. 
and it started only after the rice had all been harvested, and it it was completed in around August or September of that year, since there was uh, no urge, uh, no urgent need to complete it earlier. Nous sommes donc d'accord que. We will therefore agree that the timeline for the construction of the Kokom Czech Dam uh, was a lot longer than the period for the construction of the Kambo Dam. Yes, it took longer to build the Kokom Czech Dam, and that's in part due to the, the length of uh, that dam, which was 18 kilometers long, where the Gombao Dam was only 13 kilometers long. At the hearing of Monday the 30th of November, you also stated at about 11 hours 27 that at the Kokom Czech Dam work site there were tractors and other mechanical machines. Can you tell the chamber where they got those machines and who placed them at the disposal of those constructing that dam? Yes, there were three uh, Sunni machines and I did not know where they were uh, brought in from. They were brought in by Onka to assist in the building of the dam, and that was due to the limited number of workforces. There were only about 4,000 workers there, despite the length of the uh, dam itself. So for that reason, Anka supplemented uh, certain machines to aid the workers. You say that Anka brought the equipment to assist the workers. How did you know that those machines were sent by Anka? Did you attend a meeting during which you were told where those machines were taken from, whether they were taken from sectors or other places? Did you have any specific information in that regard? My immediate supervisor actually uh, called us to attend the meeting at that uh, Kogrum Chek Dam construction site. And we were told that in the next few days, Anka would uh, provide us with a, a few uh, Sunni machines. And yes, uh, it did happen a few days later as these three machines were brought in. Donc, si je comprends bien, on s'est contenté de. If I understand correctly, all they said was that they were provided by Anka, and they, you were not told where exactly Anka got those machines. Is that correct? Yes, uh, because my supervisor spoke uh, of Anka, so I use the same word Anka as he did not refer to any specific name. Je voudrais maintenant toujours. Still on the Kokrom Czech Dam, I would like us to now talk about the visit of a person in respect of which you said Tavala told you that person was Kiyosampan. But you yourself said subsequently uh, that. What was said did not square with Kiyosampan's physical appearance. You said you were on the road leading to Kromsrok, and I would like you to say whether you remember at what distance from Kromsrok you saw that vehicle.
The vehicle was far from Phnom Srok. However, I cannot tell you the distance. And I can tell you that the distance between Kukrum Chek Dam worksite and Phnom Srok was pretty far. As it was the boundary of Phnom Preh and Phnom Srok districts. But I cannot give you the exact length or the distance. And there was a road leading to Phnom Srok, and I saw a vehicle stopped along that road, and I was about 200 meters away from that vehicle at that time. Dans ma traduction, j'ai entendu. In the interpretation, I heard of vehicles, and then one vehicle. Do we agree that there was only one vehicle on that day? I know answer. There was only one vehicle, not many vehicles, and I do not know how many people uh, were in that uh, vehicle. I saw only one uh, person got out of the vehicle, and that person was looking uh, to the west and to the east from time to time. And later on, I saw the car was uh, heading to Phnom Sok. Then I met Dawal, and Dawal told me that uh, he was killed some pawn. I have never seen, uh, I had never seen kill some pawn before that, and I heard only of uh, his name. When I was invited to attend the hearing, and uh, at the time I was in the public gallery, and I noticed that uh, the person I saw uh, here is killed some pawn, and the individual I uh, saw back then was different from this person. At that time, Tawal told me uh, the person out of the vehicle was killed some pawn, so I uh, just said uh, that person was killed some pawn. But in fact, uh, that person was not killed some pawn. So you said, then Tawal told me that. Now, do we agree that it was only after you had seen the person leaving that Tawal then went on to say to you that that particular individual was Cusampon. In other words, it wasn't at the precise moment when you saw that person that Tawal said that it was Cusampon. Have I understood you correctly on that point? Answer, yes, that is true. Long after the vehicle had left, Daval arrived and asked me whether or not I saw a vehicle parked on the road. I told him that I saw a person uh, got, get out of the car, and Daval told me uh, that person was Kilsom Pawn. At that time, I uh, did not know Kilsom Pawn, so I just uh, took in uh, what. Uh, Tawal told me. Est-ce que uh, vous savez? Do you know where Tawal was before he came back to where you were, and then went on to say to you that that individual was Kiosampon? He was coming to you from where? Can you tell us that? Good no answer. Before that, he was at the dam work site. He was uh, going around and observed the bulldozers. He was quite away from the place where the vehicle parked. After noticing that a vehicle parked on the road, he uh, drove, uh, he was on a motorbike coming close to me and asking whether or not I saw a vehicle. 
at that time, uh, the car had already left the place. You also told us that on that particular day, there had been no announcement about the possible visit by a senior official. Would you confirm that now? Answer. No prior information. No one told me and no one told us about uh, the visit. And I noticed only uh, a vehicle coming to that place. You have told us that Taval used a motorbike to come down to the place where the excavators were working and to join up with you. Did Taval generally go around the place on a motorbike? Answer. Taval had a motorbike and he used a motorbike when, wherever he went. So he had his motorbike. Now, you told us on Monday that the distance between the points where the people were digging the soil and the place where you were when you saw the vehicle were about two kilometers apart. So are we talking about these two kilometers that Taval covered at that particular point on his motorbike? I was about uh, 200 meter away from the vehicle. But Taval was further away. He was at uh, the site where the bulldozer was uh, pushing the soil. He was about two kilometers away from the vehicle. Again, I was about 200 meters away from the vehicle. You told us just now that you only saw one person get out. But did you see others inside the car, even if they didn't get out of it? Answer. I could not see uh, physic, uh, the, uh, clearly the uh, physical appearance of those who were in the vehicle. I could only see the hats. But my understanding is that you did see certain people in the car. Do you remember if the person who got out of the car got out on the driver's side or on the passenger side or out of the rear of the car? Do you remember any details on that? Answer, I cannot recall well. The front of the car was towards uh, the north, and I uh, do not know uh, where exactly the person uh, got out of uh, the car. Since it was not my task, uh, I uh, did not uh, pay close attention, but I uh, noticed that there was one person get out of the car. Well, I'll close on that point, and now I'd like to turn to something else. On several occasions, you mentioned Chin, in particular when Council Cope was speaking with you. Can you tell me if you can remember 
when you first saw Jill in your work? Answer. I saw Jill the first time when he was at Swai area. It was the time when I went to collect the diesel. In fact, at that time, I uh, did not go to contact him personally, but uh, the individual in the unit. At that time, I was told that uh, there was a person named Jill. Later on, I could uh, see clearly his physical appearance when Jill came to arrest uh, Mon. Let's return to the question of the arrest at a later stage. But first, I'd like to ask you for a point of detail. You said you went to get some diesel fuel. Could you tell me which unit you belong to uh, when you were doing that? Uh, what did you need the diesel for? Were you still working on the dam at Trapang tomorrow, or had you moved to other duties? Answer. When I uh, saw him, I uh, was within the fishing unit, but the fishing unit was under the uh, mobile force. D'accord. Thank you. You said that you saw Chul at the moment when Merle was being arrested. Could you please tell us exactly the circumstances of when you saw him and how Meng's arrest actually took place? Answer concerning the arrest of Mon at that time, Mon and I were coming from the place where we shrank the palm juice. We understood that uh, we would be killed, so we wanted to drink the palm juice before we died. And while we were walking, there was a vehicle within which uh, there was chill, and the car stopped, and uh, we were asked to board the vehicle. At that time, I was about to get into the vehicle, but there was a soldier push me away. Only the man was pushed into the car. I fell down to the ground and fainted, after which the vehicle left. I uh, Recovered, I, I became uh, conscious at about 1.30 in the afternoon. Perhaps I may have been uh, carried uh, to the hospital. So you say that you saw Tachil in that car, and you refer to a car which may have been referred to by the wife of Taval when he was arrested and I believe I heard you saying it was a white car. When Tamun was arrested, was the same white car present? Uh, answer. When they came down to arrest Tamun, they uh, drove the they drove in a white car. Don't in E3 stroke 9094, ERN in French 0112365151, in English 
zero zero seven two eight six nine one and in Khmer zero zero seven three four one zero one You refer to the arrest of Chil, but before that, what you say is that Chil had been working for a while and they only started making the appointments um, up to his arrest. And then you're asked, when was he arrested? And you answer, he had been arrested when the South West arrived and when the West came, Chil arrested the cadres from the Northwest while the Southwest was waiting to see what Chil would do. When they saw him arresting all kinds of people, they arrested him. End of reference. So, I'd like to ask you, if you personally were present at the time of other arrests apart from Damwon, because you say that you arrested all sorts of people, so did you witness other arrests apart from Tamun? That's the first question on this. I'll ask you one or two others in a minute. Answer. After Tamun had been arrested, I was I, w was, I went to the fishing unit. Later on, there were arrests uh, within the cooperatives, and I do not know who had been arrested. And I do not know either when a jail was arrested. Well then, can you tell us what information you were using to base your statement to CCAM in, DCCAM in which you say that Chil had arrested all kinds of people? If you didn't see this, is this just something that you heard? Answer. What I know is that made the arrest within the mobile forces. Chiefs of uh, regiment down to battalions uh, were arrested, and that was the plan. But I did not see at that time that uh, chief of regiment down to battalion were arrested. Uh, this chief uh, realized that uh, they would be arrested so they pled. I did not know at the time where they pled. Was Tachil the assistant to Taung when Taval still uh, exercised his duties? Do you know? Answer. While the Wal was in his duty, I heard people say that the deputy of uh, Ta Hung was Ta Chil, but I uh, was not quite sure at that time. I heard people say that the deputy of Hung was Chil. I did not know at that time whether it was true or not. Uh, many people talked about that. You told us that between Tanim and Tajil there were family links. Do you know if Tajil's function as deputy was rooted in the fact that there was that family relationship? Do you know that? Answer. 
it is my estimate so what I'm saying now there is there was no official announcement at that time it in my it is my estimate that uh, that year was uh, the son of uh, Tanyam so uh, because of this uh, he uh, was appointed to be in a senior uh, position répondant à une question when you were answering a question just now from Council Cope, you said that you yourself did not actually attend a meeting that was chaired by Tahil, at which there was discussion of the arrival or attack by the Vietnamese, which led to the order to dig holes to conceal supplies. Other people attended that meeting, you said, and uh, other people then went on to speak to you about the meeting. Is that what I understand? Answer. Actually, there was a meeting later on. I was told about the meeting being held. I'm talking about a meeting that was chaired by Tain. Perhaps that didn't get through. Concerning the meeting held chaired by the Ren, I uh, uh, never attended that meeting. The reason that I never attended the meeting because I was working in a far distance and whenever there was a, an assignment for me to do, I would come to perform. But without you actually having attended the meeting, we do agree that you had heard about it and you said that an order emanated from it to dig holes to conceal supplies. Do you agree that that is what you indeed heard? Answer. I learned that information from others since uh, they went to the meeting. The meeting was held by Darin together with Ye Chan, whom I did not know her face. And the m meeting was held among the chiefs of cooperatives and village chiefs. And there was no instruction re related to unit chief uh, to dig up uh, the ground to conceal uh, the supply since uh, mobile forces had no supplies. I learned the information from others and I relayed uh, that information uh, and I spoke about the 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 event uh, to the investigators when I was interviewed. Do you remember the date of that meeting? Can you specify when it occurred? At least roughly. Answer. Concerning the date of the meeting, I do not know when the, exactly the meeting was held. Were you already 
in the fishing units at that stage, or were you still on the dam at Trapang Tmo? But answer. I was uh, within the fishing unit at that time. But uh, when I transported uh, the fermented fish and uh, fish to the dam site, uh, I would be informed of uh, some information. However, as I said, I uh, never, I was never invited to the meeting since I was uh, working in a far distance from that dam site. Um. There's a last point I want to bring up with you. Several times during your testimony, you said that the investigators who interviewed you may have been mistaken or may have recorded things that you were only talking about informally. So could we talk about the circumstances of your interview with DC Cam in 2011? Do you remember if during that interview you were recorded? Answer. I cannot recall it uh, whether it was recorded. The investigators went to see me on the several occasion and I do not know whether there was a re, um, audio recorded at the time. Some uh, investigators said they were students and uh, they went to interview me and they told me that they saw the photographs of me at the court. On some other occasion, there were foreigners so fair, with a fair complexion and uh, I cannot tell you whether there was you know, audio recording at the time. And I do not know whether my voice uh, was recorded Perhaps uh, things uh, which uh, I uh, talked informally uh, were recorded in the document. For this reason, the information within the uh, written records uh, is uh, mixing up. At that time, I was intended to tell what I have known only, not other matters that I have not known. With the leave of the President and with the assistance of the court official, I would like to give the witness a copy of the record of the DC CAM interview in E39094. So that he can check a reference that is contained therein. President, yes, you can do so. GSC Huang, please uh, accept the uh, document and provide it to the witness. Pour les parties, donc il s'agit du document. So this is E39. 094, and it's a document that's only in Khmer in ERN 0073431. The reference is at the bottom of the page, and in Khmer, Mr. Witness, I don't know if you can see this, there is a reference that is highlighted in yellow, and it says that this is a retranscription of uh, an audio recording. Can you see that point in the text?
Yes, I see it. Alors, après avoir vu cette mention, est-ce que ça vous rafraîchit All right. Well, in that case, does that refresh your memory? And do you remember that your interview with DC Cam staff, which I won't refer to as investigators because they're just DC Cam staff who are picking up testimony, but not as part of an investigative procedure. So, do you recall if the DC Cam staff? warned you that you were being recorded and does that reference in the text before you refresh your memory yes i recall it at that time yes the interview was uh, audio recorded but i did not know as to when the audio recorded uh, stopped the audio recording stopped À la première On the first page of this record of interview, there is mention of the duration of the interview, and I see two hours, 28 minutes, and 53 seconds. My question to you is whether you remember whether the interview you had with the DCCAM staff indeed lasted two and a half hours. Does that refresh your memory? I recall that uh, it took pretty a long time, but I cannot recall the exact uh, hours. And of course, it happened several years ago. I cannot uh, recall everything. Il n'y a pas de problème. There is no problem with that. I just wanted to know whether you recall the exact duration of the interview to the best of your recollection. Did the interview uh, go on in one time period or over different time periods? I cannot recall that. However, it, the interview uh, lasted uh, a pretty long time for that occasion. And I was interviewed a few uh, times after that. However, sometimes uh, uh, an interview was uh, shorter than this one. Um, dans ces conditions, je ne vais pas vous embêter plus. That being the case, I will not bother you any further witness. Mr. President, I am done with my examination of this witness, and my colleague, Ong Samon, may have some questions for the witness. My, my colleague, Ong Samon, doesn't have any questions for the witness. I beg your pardon. And uh, Councillor Copper, do you have the floor? Um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one remaining point. Uh, we never received uh, the photos that we discussed yesterday. I know I'm looking at the prosecution, uh, whether he would uh, still be so kind to uh, send me those photos. We certainly will provide them, but we're still waiting for authorization, uh, uh, okay, from the investigating judge, who I understand was away in, a, or was in meetings all day yesterday. So, but um, assuming we get authorization, They'll provide them to you. I think you'll find them to be not of particular interest, but, but uh, assuming our request is granted, which I would expect you will receive them. President, thank you for the clarification. The hearing of testimony of a witness to TCW918 is now concluded, and the Chamber is grateful of your testimony, Mr. Witness, for the last two and a half days.
your testimony may contribute to ascertaining the truth in this case. And you are now excused, uh, and you may leave the courtroom and return to wherever you uh, wish to go to. And the chamber wishes you all the very best. Court officer, in collaboration with the WISU, please make a necessary transportation for the witness to return to his residence. And Mr. Mamrat here, the chamber is grateful of your assistance, and you are also excused from the courtroom. Next, the chamber will hear testimony of a civil party, that is to TCCP 300, in relation to the uh, treatment of the Vietnamese. Bun Lam Hu is a TPO staff who will lend support to the civil party during testimony. And the uh, court officer, please usher this civil party as well as the TPO staff into the courtroom. Thank you. President, good morning, Mr. Civil Party. Uh, what is your name? Civil Party. My name is Pradun. President, thank you. And when were you born, Mr. Pradun? And please uh, observe the microphone. You should speak only after you see the red light on the tip of the uh, microphone. And please have a short pause uh, before you answer the question so that you can think of your response. And this is at the same time so that you have to wait for the microphone to be operational. So again, when were you born, Mr. Pradun? And sir, I cannot recall it. Question. So, how old are you this year? Answer, I am 73 years old. President, uh, where were you born? Answer, I was born in Kampong Pre village, Chinook Tru, Commune, Boribo District, Kampong Chinang Province. Question. And where is your present address? Answer, I remained living in the same village. 
question. And what is your current occupation? And uh, I am a member of the Pagoda Committee. Question, what are the names of your father and mother? Answer, Prathau is my father. O Min is my mother, both are deceased. Question, what is your wife's name and how many children do you have? Answer, my uh, previous wife passed away and I remarried in 1979. Question, what is the name of your current wife and how many children do you have? Answer, I have two children from my previous uh, marriage and I have five from the uh, current wife. So all together, I have seven children. However, uh, two pass away. So I have five children at the moment. President, thank you. Mr. Pradun, as a civil party, you may make a victim's impact statement, if any. that happened uh, to you during the Democratic Cambodia period from the 17th April 1975 to the 6th January 79, if you wish to do so. And based on the information given to the court by the court officer that you may have a, a health issue, please uh, inform the uh, chamber or uh, by raising your hand if you wish to uh, take a break uh, at any time during your testimony. So you may be examined by the standby to medical staff during uh, this testimony. And Mr. Witness, have you been interviewed by investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges? Answer. I have been interviewed by investigators about uh, the events uh, that uh, took place uh, during the genocidal regime. Question. I refer to the investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges of this court. Had you been interviewed by these OCIJ investigators, or have you been interviewed by another entity? Answer. I cannot recall the names of uh, those interviewers. However, I was interviewed about uh, the torture inflicted upon me during the Apopo regime in my capacity as, as a victim. And I uh, told them about uh, the tortures that I was inflicted upon, about the uh, mistreatment of my wife, children, and about the loss of their lives and the lives of my parents-in-law. Question, and can you uh, recall when that interview take place and where? Answer, I can only recall uh, uh, some parts of the interview 
and allow me to apologize to you, Mr. President, if I cannot recall every account that I said uh, earlier. President, my question to you, Mr. Sivapati, is that in relation to the interview given by you to the interviewers, when and where did it happen? And please limit your response to that. Can you respond to that? That is when and where the interview took place. Answer. I cannot recall it because at that time my health was also uh, not uh, good. So um, my apology to you, Mr. President. President, thank you. Pursuant to Rule 91B of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber will hand the floor first to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties before uh, other parties. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to everyone. We will give the floor to uh, Liman Guyen, who is counsel for Mr. Pragdon, and uh, she will be the person to put questions to the civil party. Yes, uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honours. Mr. Prakdhan, my questions today will focus on your family and particularly what happened to your wife and your children during the Khmer Rouge regime. But just some preliminary information about where you were from. Uh, before, a before April 1975, where did you reside? Good morning. I was evacuated by the Khmer Rouge uh, to leave my village and stay at Pachyongwa village, Boribo commune, Kampung Chenang province. Later on, I had to be en route again for a period of four months where I separated from my children and wife and I was instructed to uh, go and find fish in a fishing unit in order to find uh, these fish supplied uh, to the uh, units. Later on, after I separated from my wife and children, I was assigned to live at Kosromo a commune and Sri Pekontel commune. So, uh, where were you lo relocated from to Pek Chanva village? Where did you reside before that? I left my uh, village, then I walked through National Road Number 5 to Pek Chanva commune where I stayed there uh, for a while, that is for about a week, and after the food ran out, then I had to find my own food to eat in order to survive. And about three weeks after, I was, uh, rather by that time I already separated from uh, my wife and children and at the Tamil commune, I was uh, assigned to a fishing unit in order to find fish uh, for distribution through other units. And I uh, worked wherever I was assigned by Onka, and nobody could uh, protest that. Thank you, Mr. Prakdun. We will go into the details about the various places that you were relocated to and what happened there. But just for the moment, I want to focus on your marriage with your first wife. When did you get married with your first wife? I married 
divorced my first wife uh, during the uh, Samdaisiano regime, and that happened in 1966. Uh, by that time, I was uh, 18 years old, and I married and resided in the same native village. What was the name of your first wife? Samban is her name. What was her ethnicity? My first wife was uh, Vietnamese. Where was she born? Then, uh, Mr. Witness, please observe the uh, microphone. Witness, my wife was born in the same village, same commune, uh, district, and province. And was that Shnok Tru village in Kampong Shnang province? Yes, that is correct. Could you describe your wife? What did she look like? She is healthy and has a light complexion. Her height was about 1.55 meters, and her age was similar to my age. So if she is leaving, she is around 73 by now. What languages did she speak? See, we studied in the same uh, class uh, up to the uh, grade 8 in the old education system, so she could speak my fluently. Did she have Cambodian nationality or an ID card? We had our marriage certificate and of course uh, she held a uh, Khmer nationality. Did she speak the Vietnamese language? Yes, yeah, she spoke, uh, she knew Vietnamese, but she did not uh, use it. She only spoke uh, Khmer and French. Did she have any brothers or sisters? She was the only child in her family. Did she look Vietnamese or did she look Cambodian? Her facial figure uh, was uh, that of Khmer, but uh, she had lighter complexion. Were her parents both ethnically Vietnamese? The uh, mother was uh, ethnically Vietnamese, but the father was uh, half-blood Chinese. Where were her parents born? I do not know that. I do not know where they were born because at that time I was uh, young and of course I did not dare ask them where they were born. Did her, pa did her parents look or dress Vietnamese?
the way they dress was uh, truly uh, Vietnamese. And when they uh, spoke uh, Khmer, they spoke with a uh, severe accent. So although they spoke with severe accent, uh, they, it could be understood, although the mother spoke with more accent than t the father. Did her family follow Vietnamese traditions? Yes. For example, during the Chinese uh, New Year celebration, they celebrated according to their uh, to their culture, but uh, they did not practice uh, such ceremony according to the Buddhist uh, religion. They do, they did not. When you married your wife, was it accepted by your family and by your community? So after we consented to marriage, then the marriage uh, ceremony uh, was held, and of course we went along pretty well. I refer both uh, to uh, my family side and to her family side. Did she suffer any discrimination in the years that you were married, leading up to the Khmer Rouge regime? But I no, there was no discrimination at all, and we were well received. Was her father and her mother, that is your parents-in-law, were they both alive in 1975? But the my father passed uh, my father in law uh, passed away during the Sihanou regime however in 1975 my mother in law was uh, alive and she went together with me when we were evacuated i'd like to now turn to your children did you have any children in 1975 <coughs> Five children by 1975, says the witness, says the civil party, and I uh, got another child in 1977, so there were six all together by that year. How many girls did you have and how many boys? How can have five daughters and one son. And all of these six children were with your Vietnamese wife, is that right? No. Mr. Civil Party, please wait and Council Copper, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I object to the word to the words Vietnamese wife. Um, of course, it, it depends on how we define nationality. But from the answers of this uh, civil party, I, I conclude that in '75, his wife uh, was a, a Khmer citizen, albeit with um, Vietnamese roots. But she was a Khmer citizen. So I think that should be uh, uh, the, the, the proper question. Your Honours, 
the witness has given evidence that his wife was ethnically Vietnamese. So I think it is appropriate to characterize her as a Vietnamese wife. When I am saying Vietnamese, I am referring to her ethnicity and to her race, not to her nationality. May I proceed? President, so we have to make a distinction between the ethnicity and nationality. And uh, I uh, want the lawyers to make it clear whether you want to use the nationality or you want to use uh, ethnicity. But I think if we refer the wife uh, by using the nationality, I think it is clear because it is by law. So when uh, we refer one, when we use the word nationality, that is the uh, nationality registered within the legal document. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, perhaps to be perfectly clear, when I use the word Vietnamese, I will precede it by ethnic Vietnamese. Mr. Prak Dern, the uh, five daughters and one son that you had with your uh, wife, was that with your first wife, who was ethnically Vietnamese? But we live together. However, later on, after the Khmer Rouge came to take control, uh, we lived in different places since uh, we were uh, dispersed uh, into different units and different cooperatives. Children were put in a separate unit. Uh, parents, uh, I mean uh, wife and husband, were separated. President, it is now time for the adjournment, and uh, the chamber will now adjourn, and uh, the hearing will resume at 1.30. Court officer, please assist the civil party during uh, the lunch break, and please invite uh, the civil party back into the courtroom together with his duty, duty counsel at 1.30. Security personnel, please send uh, Mr. Kilson Pond back to the waiting room downstairs, and please uh, return him into the courtroom in, at uh, 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>